So each of the children wanted to do it. The eldest finally kept after his father, I'll do it, I'll do it. I really want to do it. I want to bring you this water. Finally, the father granted him permission, so he took his father's calabash, went off. Now, the thing, his name, by the way, was uh, Kea Maka. And he was a very selfish person. Because he knew in his mind he didn't want to get the, the water just for his father, but he wanted to be the one to, to do something that would fill his father with pride so that he would be chosen as the next chief. Now you've got to understand a little bit of Hawaiian culture there. In the ancient times, actually even in the monarchy, a lot of people don't realize this, but in, from the most ancient times, they did not have a right of succession to become a chief that came from being the eldest or that came from being of the right family or in a particular relationship, they didn't do that. The only right of succession came when the chief, or in later times the king, named someone. And he could name anyone he wanted, or was a queen, anyone she wanted. And if they didn't name someone, then in the most ancient times, the council of other chiefs had to get together and elect somebody, or in the modern times, it was the council of nobles had to get together and elect somebody. They had to do that twice in modern history. But in the very ancient times, somebody had to be named. And so the eldest wanted to be the one who was named, and he thought if he could get this water of Kani and he could bring it back, and his father was healed, then he'd be the one, definitely, to be the next chief. So off he went. And he left Kone, went through Hilo District, and he was on his way up in the Halmakua area, looking for a way in to find his way up. And on the trail, while he was going through the, the woods on the trail, there was a really ugly little man. And the man stepped out on the trail and he said, where are you going? Such in a rush. And the eldest said, get out of my way, ugly little man. And he brushed him aside and went on. But as he went on and started to struggle up the mountain, why suddenly he was even worse, it was even more difficult than it was before. And he fell over a few tree branches fell down and roots grabbed his legs and gullies seemed to open up out of nowhere. And finally, as he was trying to climb over something, a big tree came down, smashed right up on top of him. And sad to say, all fairy tales aren't happy ones. He died. Went to the land of dead spirits. So they waited back in Pune, waited a long time, waited and waited and waited, because they knew it was going to be a long trip. Finally, he never came back, and the second son came up. <coughs> Excuse me. His name was Hili Peao, and he went out to get, get his father to give him permission. So he got the calabash, and he went up. And he went on up through Pune and up through Hilo District and into Alakua and looking for a way up and he's going along the trail and he meets this really ugly little man on the trail. He says, where are you going in such a rush? He says, ugly little man, I don't have time for you. I have more important things to do than talk to you. Out of my way. And on he rushed. Wow. By now you can probably guess what happened. <laughs> Tree branches fell down, the roots grabbed at his feet, gullies opened up. And the more he struggled, the worse it got, until finally a gully opened up where he didn't think was one, very deep, and he fell down to his death and ended up in the land of spirits. So finally, it was time, they waited again a very long time, and finally the youngest one, whose name was uh, Lokomai Kai, he went to his father, and his father really didn't, but he knew he was dying, so he one last chance, my last son, if I die, what's going to happen anyway? So the son takes the calabash and goes off into the woods. He goes, same route, you know, Hilo, Hamakura, up the mountain, sees the little old ugly man on the trail. The man says, where are you going in such a rush? He says, oh, kind sir. He says, I'm looking for the water of Kane because my father is ill. And he's the only one who wasn't thinking of what it'll do for me. And he, so he said, uh, you seem to live in this area. Do you know where the path is? 
And at that moment, this ugly little man turned to a kind of a mist and became the spirit of a beautiful woman in a kua. Now this was long, long even before Kelly, but her name was Lily Noy. And she was the spirit of the mountain herself, itself. And she said, because you have a good heart, and because you're doing this, and because you were kind enough to honor me, a stranger, here's the path. She told him how to get there. She was not the kind of a guru who would lift him up and take him. Still had to go through the hard work of getting there. But she gave him the trail. What she did do, however, was very important because none of the tree branches fell down, none of the roots tried to grab his feet, there were no gullies that opened up suddenly before him. The path wasn't easy, but then it wasn't impossible either. So after a long, long time of struggle, he finally got up to the top of Mount Akea. Where well, they have today, there are two main cinder cones up there. One is today is called Pukuzulino. And uh, the other cinder cone is called Pu Poliahu. And then in between those, just a little off, is a lake called Waiau. And the water from that lake is considered, even in the ancient times, very, very sacred, even in more modern times. Not now anymore. But in more modern times, very sacred and healing water. And that was the water of Kani in that lake. So he gets his calabash full. <coughs> Now on his way, he's coming back down, and he meets Lily Noy again. She's down somewhere on the, on the flank of the mountain as he's coming back. And he said, oh spirit, he said, since you know so much about this, and you are spirit, you know about the land, and you know about the world of spirit as well. He said, what happened to my brothers? And she said, oh well, you know, they were selfish, and they were greedy, and they died, and they're, they're in the land of spirit now. Oh, he says, I, I can't go back without my brothers. I want to bring them back. And she said, I really don't recommend it. And he said, no, they're my brothers, they're my family. I have to uh, do this. So she guided him this time through into the realm of the spirits of the dead. And there they were, very unhappy, eating moths. That's all they have to eat, the spirit of the dead. <laughs> and so... Uh, he sprinkled a little bit of the water of Kani on them, and they came back to life. And then very happily, he thought, because they were happy to be alive, and they came back down. Well, while they were still coming down in the Hilo district, it was a long trail, so they had to sort of like camp out overnight. So while they camped, and while uh, Loko Maikai was sleeping, the brothers came up. Hit him on the head with a rock, tied him up, took the calabash, and came all the way back down and back to the to the uh, king, to the chief rather. And so as they came back to the chief, then they had a fight between them. And the eldest won, and he brought the calabash to the chief, and he said, "Here, father, here is the water of Kani that will heal you." And the chief says, "Oh, thank goodness." And he takes a big sip and spits it out. And he says, what is this? And it had turned to salt water. And he said, chased him away and cast him out and, and you know, sent him away from, from the home and from the village, from the people and everything. And banished him. There it is. There's their word for it. Uh, so the younger boy said, okay, well, I know what happened because I kept some of this for myself and my own calabash. Here, Father, here's the real water of Kani. And the Father said, all right, thank goodness. And he takes it, spits it out. This is swamp water. What are you trying to do to me? You're trying to kill me. Banishes the second son. Finally, here comes the third son. Now you see, meanwhile, while all of this was going on, Lily Noy, of course, the spirit of the mountain, came down saw what happened. Now she was a, such a kind spirit that she never even said, I told you something. <laughs> she was goodness personified. So what she did was she brought him another calabash of the water of life and helped him on his way so that when he got back down, back to the chief, and 
And he gave him his father. Here's the water of Kane, Father. Because his heart was pure, the water was pure. And because the chief was also good in his heart, he drank the water and uh, survived, revived, became very healthy, decided he wanted to spend the rest of his life in retirement, and named his son the chief, and he went off and 